Dale Thrond here, and I'm here with a very special episode as usual. Uh, this is going to be an address to Matt Pat over at uh, Gamer or Game Theorist. Uh, he basically said a bunch of stuff about uh, cloth armor being hard and not stopping arrows. We've already done some testing on this, but this is the official video. Somebody asked me to make a composite of uh, Gambeson. So what I've done is uh, I've used different materials because you want a little padding because you want bounce to your Gambeson. I've used that really coarse, tightly woven linen that was sent to me by Andreas Knoll, and I've used a little bit of tighter woven linen like could be used in a tunic or something instead of like the sackcloth. I think this is going to perform much better, uh, and this is actually something that, I mean, it'd be a little stretched to put it on there, but you could actually have this maybe under a, an, an arm or something and still use it. So I think this will be quite entertaining to see how well it stops. It. Tested hardened leather. We tested hardened leather. Uh, and I have a piece of that because obviously that's not going to fit on the belly. Once you harden this leather, it's like a piece of plate armor. Uh, if you try to bend it too far, it'll break. I have a piece of it from the other day. We might use that, but I'm going to use just plain old sole bin. This is really thick leather. And I'm going to see with a little bit of padding behind this or cloth, if it's possible that it could stop an arrow. Because he also put down leather armor saying that's all the Viking would have. Technically, we don't know if Vikings wore leather armor. Uh, I mean, it's, it, we do have some references in the sagas, but you don't find leather in the Viking Age, just as you like, you don't find shield coverings on the Skjaldr. You don't find the rawhide. And yes, they could have worn rawhide pieces. Hardened leather is not that hard to make. Anybody could do that. And they could have had really thick leather, like uh, oxen leather on their body. So let's get going. We're going to shoot this with our bow. I've got ballistics gel right here, or ballistics belly jelly, or whatever you want to call it, jelly belly. Uh, I'm going to start off by putting our, our uh, gambeson on the target. All right, I have mild steel here. I've shaped into a triangular bodkin. It's a sharp bodkin, but as, you, as you've seen probably, Mike Lodes did a test with a 140 pound war bow against gambeson, uh, and it actually stopped the arrow. I've tried to do my best to make a composite material that's a little bit thinner than we used in the other video, and if it was quilted together, it would be under an inch. It would be maybe a little over a half inch thick if it was quilted, probably. Uh, no. I'll try one more time with this, because people say I don't get full draws. I did a full draw, but I shall draw one more time and give it everything. I'll pull back and overextend. Wow, she's going to have a pain in the tit. Uh, yeah, it went out the back side of her head. Okay, let's try that again, shall we? Uh, I was distracted by our uh, Skialmeyer's uh, bosoms a little bit there. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Now, uh, that was a full draw. Uh, as far as I can draw that bow without going past it, like old ANR did uh, with the uh, Orlock. Let's go ahead and show this one. Cut this off. Razor heads shall be next, but uh, with the actual padding to help reinforce it, uh, we're not making it past that much. It is catching the arrow. When it hits that padded layer, it doesn't allow it to go through. So if you mix the cloth with the padding, you can go much thinner than this. I was just overcompensating for a razor. We see a composite material where you use some padding, uh, like felt. Uh, and tightly woven linen and different grades of linen actually works better. It only made it about halfway through, not even quite. It stopped at the first bit of padding. Let's try our razor head. This is a triangular shaped razor head, very much like our triangular bodkin, but it's sharp, so maybe it'll do better. We shall see. All right, we did need the extra amount in this one. Most certainly. Ooh. I would say we needed the, our extra amount of gambeson, like I thought we would for this arrow with that pound of bow. We actually made it uh, about halfway through, a little bit further. We made it to the next layer of padding, but we didn't make it through the next layer of gambeson. Our ballistics jelly, our ballistics gelatin is perfectly. Ballistics belly. Belly. Ballistics belly uh, is perfectly intact. Much like Mike Lowe's test, we confirmed it. And Matt Pat, 
you are totally inaccurate on saying cloth armor was the paper armor of the uh, Middle Ages and early uh, medieval, medieval ages. Basically, if you were using this, it could be much thinner, but all we actually needed to stop that arrow from our 65, 70 pound bow was this much, which is actually not much. If it was quilted, it'd be much thinner, a little more rigid, but it would still work just the same. We didn't need all the material that I had with it. I had too much, but for a 140 pound war bow, it would probably take all this. Jail fared well, no damage whatsoever through our gamut. It didn't even take the entire amount to stop it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of padding behind this. This is not gamut, this is padding. Uh, that gives us an idea of some uh, heavy clothing under it. My arrow will go clean through this, but let's see if I can get this on here. The first one hit here is what it appears like. It hit some, maybe. But this one hit here, and we actually see when one of the problems with hardened leather, it got a little brittle around the edges as I hardened it. I did use some oil to try to re-soften it a little bit, but what we had here is that it actually cracked, but it stopped it. Bounced right. A razor head here. Uh, it's a triangular shaped razor head, which wasn't common in the Middle Ages, but it's real similar to the Botkin style, so I think it gives it a good chance to go through. We've seen it in the other videos work, work for us, especially on the plate knee. Uh, on our knee episode, see what happens. Well, I think you just hit the same spot again. One of the problems you see with hardened leather, it can get too hard. Uh, I did my best with it, but around the edges, I think it got over treated and got a little bit too hard, but it still did its job. It stopped this arrow from going through and uh, did the same thing out below. You barely scathed this leather, barely poked into it. Uh, and this leather is untreated here. It's just really thick leather. So uh, we're going to go ahead and try that out next. But let's say if the Vikings had uh, cure bully, which uh, means uh, cured by boiling leather or hardening, uh, they certainly would have had good protection. I think people need to get away from this idea of fantasy gaming where cloth, geek armor class, and leather a little better, and mail a little better than that, and plate even better. Uh, they all have different attributes and characteristics, but if they wore them, they probably were. I have our short triangular shaped bodkin that I created out of soft steel. Uh, hopefully, uh, this pierce as well. I'm assuming it will. It didn't make it through. All right, that was not over the uh, ballistic skeleton, so we hit the mannequin as well. Let's see if that had anything to do with our results. Apparently not. hit right here that is over our gel most certainly and it dimpled the back of the leather slightly but it wasn't able to make it through let's try a razor head remember this is slightly hardened because it's older leather and hasn't been treated very well but it is not uh, not uh, hardened in that manner uh, we did hit here earlier and that looks like that stopped one of the arrows that's where the bounce came from now that I can see it better without the tape on it so it just hit over a double double layer of leather. So technically just leather, if it's cured properly and heavy, uh, could stop arrows as well. Uh, we've got a sharp razor head here, and I'm going to see if we can get through that heavy leather uh, and into that ballistic shell into the mild padding. That is right over the jelly. Let's see what happens. Jelly belly. right over our ballistic gelatin. Uh, that's what we were aiming for. Uh, it just stuck in the leather. Actually, that's the only one that actually made it through. Let's see if our gel was damaged in any way. It was right over the gel and the gel had slipped down a little bit, but it did not damage the gel in any way. So what it tells me is just really thick, heavy leather can stop at a 70 pound bow with the broadhead or the Botkin style point. So if you were wearing something like this and a little padding behind it, you would have more than ample protection, in my opinion. And I think that Matt Pat was unfair saying that leather armor was crappy or, or shoddy armor. And 
a cloth as well. Uh, so I don't see how the arrows would be a main issue, as he was trying to say, especially considering that everybody, the knight and the viking, wore male armor, which uh, performed even more spectacular than, than this uh, leather right here. Enjoyed the episode. Be sure to like and subscribe, and farewell.